Hello, I'm Delia Delore. This programme brings you up to date with the services and improvements in St Lucia's healthcare. Today we discuss the Ministry of Health and Wellness's new Emergency Disaster Management Plan and the services the Department of Environmental Health provides. During the production of this programme, I learned that I've taken the nation's health and safety for granted and that I grossly underestimated the planning and professional skills of the people responsible for the nation's disaster readiness and environmental health, vector and food safety. The people I interviewed brought it home to me that, as individuals, we have a responsibility to know more about our health service and where to go to to find their services. This programme also features interviews in Creole with Bernal Neptune and I'll ask you questions, give you their answers and we'll learn together. Stay with me. Coming up, we tell you about the meticulous planning of the Emergency Disaster Management System for man-made and national disasters. We take a closer look at the Environmental Health Division and why everyone handling food that is sold to the public must have a food handler's license and how they can apply. But first, there are seasonal hazards that we can prepare for like hurricanes and there are unforeseen situations that become immediate hazards like airborne viruses. Regardless, it is certain that when disaster strikes, we must know what to do. Here are some of the perceptions of St Lucia's Emergency Disaster Management Plan, which we will answer during this program. We'll talk about perceptions about the environmental health service later. Disaster efforts are recognised by the public, but more government involvement at community levels would like to be seen. The Ministry of Health and Wellness Disaster Planning Teams continues to work with organisations and non-governmental agencies, but the Ministry needs the community to be involved by attending community meetings and activities. Health services disrupted during disasters will be attended to when government departments dispatch their teams. When services are disrupted during disasters, there are primary healthcare emergency response teams comprising of physicians, nurses, the Bureau of Health Education, Environmental Health and other external agencies. Tekla, how do you prepare for national disasters? You said national? Mm -hmm. Okay, national disasters, I take it to mean hurricanes, storms. Um, how do I prepare first? By ensuring that my environment is clean and free from any debris that will affect my property or surroundings. And I mean ensure that all the drains and gutters are cleaned, ensure that the guttering of the house is cleaned. Um, I would also ensure if there are any branches that would cause any damage, whether it be to clog drains or clog the gutterings, they would be cut. Um, in terms of food supply, I would ensure that we have as much dry stuff as possible. Biscuits, salt fish, anything that does not need refrigerating, flour, sugar, rice, etc. Um, in terms of medicines, in the event anybody gets hurt, I would ensure that medicines are stocked, for example, painkillers, um, the bandages, the plasters, and any type of medication that one would use that does not require a prescription, but you can keep in a filing cabinet for any emergency purposes until you get some form of medical attention, I would ensure that those things are properly stored, especially when our authorities give or sound the alarm that a natural disaster is approaching, I would make sure that my stock is in stock and I have enough supplies that I can probably share with neighbors, families or friends. Why do you think sometimes that we wait until the very last minute to get you know, the ball rolling on preparing? I, I would like to think that it's a cultural behavior where people always think that last minute they should prepare because sometimes I listen to, you know, the views of a lot of persons when it comes to natural disasters and they would tell you, oh, well, Nemo said that a hurricane would come and we had no hurricane. So it's like I'm not preparing because there's no hurricane. But I believe that you should prepare whether there is a disaster or not because like you said, a natural disaster is not something that you can plan is not something that could predict you can predict it is very unpredictable so we should always be prepared because you never know i am sure in 2017 that nobody thought 90 percent of dominica would have been wiped out and 100 percent of barbuda would be wiped out and saint martin 
would be as devastated as it was because we have never seen such disasters in the Caribbean since David in 1979. So I believe as a people we should all be prepared, no matter race, color or creed. It doesn't matter whether you live in a low-lying area or on a mountain, because a mountain, of course, there can be landslides, just as the low-lying areas can experience flooding. So we should always be prepared. Managing disasters relies on several factors and includes being aware of natural and man-made threats, how to deal with them, and knowing how other organizations can assist. And then, of course, the nation needs to be informed. The new Multi-Hazard Emergency Disaster Management Plan has been developed to coordinate and collaborate its preparedness when responding to all hazards. Dr. Glensford Joseph tells us more. The Ministry of Health, working in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization and the National Emergency Management Organization of St. Lucia, would have, in collaboration also with other agencies, developed the health sector, multi-hazard, emergency disaster management plan in 2018. This plan has reached the point of awaiting approval. It is very important that the ministry, in collaboration with the relevant agencies, develop this plan. This multi-hazard plan gives the ministry an opportunity to better coordinate and collaborate its preparedness, mitigation, and response to all hazards, whether natural or man-made. It is important to know that the ministry has several sub-plans. Within each health facility, there is a disaster plan. Within the Ministry of Health itself, there are plans that deals with infectious diseases. There are plans that deals with hurricane. But these plans are all event specific. And as such, this multi-hazard plan will be able to better coordinate all those plans so that irrespective of the event, we can use the commonality of all those events and better manage our resources. It is important to mention that, as we say, disasters come in different forms. Natural disasters are those which arise as a result of natural phenomena. Example we have, we know that we are preparing for the 2019-2020 hurricane season, which begins June the 1st and ends 2020, November the 30th. Every year, the ministry, in collaboration with multiple agencies, prepare, we ensure that all health facilities, all departments within the Ministry of Health have plans and procedures in place ahead of time to respond in the event of a hurricane. With this multi-hazard plan, we are not only going to be preparing for hurricane, come the hurricane season, but throughout the year, disaster management is an all-year, everyday business. Not only when you say hurricane is coming, then we're going to be prepared. We have to realize that some disasters like earthquake are a sudden onset, little warning, and so we must be prepared. We have infectious diseases. Example, we would have had an incident of the measles of recent. And it takes one case of measles, for example, to have an outbreak. Now, imagine you have about 20 or more of those cases on island. The negative impact on, at the individual level, the community, and the nation as a whole the health sector must be in a position to anticipate, have constant surveillance 
so that any threat is identified pretty early so that the mechanisms put in place which this multi-hazard plan would contribute to to respond effectively to mitigate any impact of disaster on the nation. Now we have things like, for instance, you can go to be screened for these non-communicable chronic diseases, right, which we know diabetes, hypertension, are impacted by disaster, the stress of disaster cause worsening of those illnesses. So we need to ensure that, you know, we are not impacted by it. And if you are, you're encouraged to maintain your appointments at the wellness centers so that your primary health care physicians, nurses, or health care provider would ensure that your health is of optimum standard to withstand the effect of a disaster. In so doing, persons who are having chronic non-communicable diseases, we encourage you to always have at least two weeks to one month supply of your medication so that if the service or services of the health sector is being interrupted, you at least have 72 hours or more of medical supply to take you through. Uh, while we talk of health, the Department of Nutrition works in tandem with several departments and across other sectors like the Ministry of Education as they promote health. We recognize that the community is the backbone. The community needs to be resilient and as such they need the relevant information because knowledge is power. And we have the Bureau of Health Education within the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And they would share pertinent information as it relates to disasters. One of the things we are planning to move forward with is to further integrate such service as the Bureau of Health Education offers to the community so that persons can be better sensitized as to the things they should do for the various types of disasters. I have a question for you now with the answer provided right afterwards, followed by the Creole segment with Fennel Neptune. Question. The Multi-Hazard Emergency Disaster Management Plan takes into consideration all areas of preparedness and areas of support for immediate and unforeseen disasters. True or false? Answer, true. The Emergency Disaster Management Plan provides the Ministry of Health and Wellness with opportunities to coordinate and collaborate all disasters. There are several sub-plans which are event-specific, so the Ministry collaborates with other agencies to manage all available resources. Question. After an emergency, you can ask your neighbours for help while you wait for a national disaster team to look after your community. True or false? Answer. This question is partly true and partly false. There are teams within your community that are familiar with the National Disaster Plan for the Nation. The community team may be able to assist with your urgent needs, but they do work with the National Disaster Team on your behalf. Alane Demil Dezwit, Minister de Sete, Organisation pour Sete CPI Kawahib La Pahou, et Organisation pour Ménagement des Asses Sete Nimo, te vini ensemble pour développer yon plan pour ménager des asses Sete Sete. Ça, c'est Health Sector Multi Hazard Emergency Disaster Management Plan. Plan ça là, aussi qu'il y a un ministère de santé, opportunité pour préparer et répondre plus mieux pour pièces de désastre, même si il y a des gens qui sont en école et des gens qui sont en école, ça veut dire des man-made et des naturels désastres. Coordinateur pour des désastres, Dr. Glenswood Joseph, dit que c'est différents départements du ministère de santé 
chaque ni plan de zas et système à place à tous les cas de zas qu'on cyclone. Dr. Joseph Deki, il est important pour le ministère de Santé et de que sept lycées à ces différents communes là à sous des zas et puis c'est pour les autres là. Bureau pour l'éducation santé, ça c'est Bureau of Health Education, ni responsabilité pour porter des informations à sous des zas. Un multi-hazard emergency disaster management plan qui a aidé le ministère de santé à faire préparation pour des as manuels et naturels. A, B, B, no. Réponse là, c'est oui. The emergency disaster management plan has recently been reviewed. One of the major improvements will be the emergency operation centers which will provide wider communications and telecommunication systems should telephone lines be disconnected during emergencies. Jacqueline Fevre outlines the improvements of the emergency disaster preparedness plan. The disaster management plan has recently been reviewed. We met as an agency and our stakeholders as well met with us to review the plan. Um, we are in the process of going through the implementation plan, one of which is the setup of emergency operation centers. Before the ministry operated with one emergency operation center, which was based in the north. Right now, we are receiving funds or we have received funds to set up two emergency centers. So they will be fully equipped, one in the north and one in the south. Also, we will be receiving funds to um, establish the ministry's communication system. The communication system would come into effect when there is, particularly for disasters, um, the phone lines are down and there is no means of communication. So with the emergency communication system, we would set up base systems and transmitters in various parts of the island in order to allow us to communicate with our regional health offices when there's a disaster. Question. How many disaster operation centers are there in St. Lucia? One or two? Answer. Two. There are two disaster operation centers in St. Lucia, one in the north and one in the south. Would you know where to contact shortly before a disaster if you felt you weren't prepared or after a disaster when you urgently need help? This question came to mind as one we don't think about until we are in need of the answer. Within your community, organisations exist that can relay your needs to national organisations. Dr. Joseph explains. Because disaster is more decentralised with the health facilities, the wellness centers, we have the physician, nurses, and they are integrated into what is called the community disaster, or the, um, the word, let me use the term, district disaster committee that is under the umbrella of NEMO, the National Emergency Management Organization. At that district level, the regional health teams are integrated into those committees. So if there is challenges at that level, they communicate with the health personnel there. They can also communicate through the district committees, which is under the umbrella of NEMO, and as such, all relevant information would be channeled up through NEMO to health because of the structure in terms of a major incident or event where there is significant disruption of property, the environment, and possible loss of lives with injuries, there is activation of not only the health sector plan, but the national plan of which this health sector plan forms a part. It's part of NEMO. So one such an activation has been made, then the relevant 
personnel would respond to the emergency operating center. That is, you have the National Emergency Operating Center at NEMO, but also within the health sector, there is the Health Emergency Operating Center. So while some personnel from the Ministry of Health would be at NEMO, you have another set of persons going to be operating at the Health Emergency Operating Center, liaising with the various communities, receiving information, and as such, relaying back, providing the relevant feedback. Mm -hmm. And as such, you have the two-way communication. Well, it's going to be multiple levels of communication to ensure the safety of these persons. Question. How much medication should you save in the event of a disaster? A. 72-hour supply. B. Two-week supply. C. One-month supply. Answer. C. One-month supply. Ideally, you should have at least one month supply of medicine saved, but the minimum should be a 72-hour supply. That's three days. When we come back, we talk to officers in the Environmental Health Unit. But first, here's the Creole segment with Fennel Netsu. Ministère de Santé, j'ai aussi vu un plan pour ménager des astes, ça c'est Emergency Disaster Management Plan. Et puis après, il y a des points pour maintenir. Yo go pogwe minister ja fè se kote yo ka travay pou etabli des centres pou pou assurer se bit. Sa se emergency operation centers. Avan, minister a teni yon selman an nou pe ya. Minister de santé osi ka yo wisi vwa la jè pou etabli a sistem pou za fè komunikasyon ek telekomunikasyon, sa se communications ek telekomunikasyon sistem ato dezas. Sa ka yo si e de ministè a pou fè komunikasyon epi yo fi sati a kawa hibla a ta de zas kote ling telefon pa ka twavay. Kome senta operasyon de zas nou ni an set lisi. E, yon, B, D. We pos la se D. Environmental health is a major factor in health and wellness. Within the Department of Environmental Health, there are three key units with many teams and specialists who monitor the quality of the air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink and use, and international diseases, many of which have been eradicated from our shores. But how aware are you of the department's services and responsibilities, and would you know where to go to with your environmental health issues? Stay with me to find out. Remember, this program also features information in Creole, and provides questions and their answers to keep you on the right track. Every program in this series discusses some of the preconceptions within our healthcare. For example, we see many people selling food at various places around the island, and we may think, I know this person. But when serving food, each food handler requires a food handler certificate, which they can acquire at the Environmental Health Division, and it's free. More on this later. But for now, imagine someone handling food, then going to the washroom and not washing their hands properly or not washing their hands at all before returning to touch the very food that they are preparing for you. Here are some more perceptions, but stay with us as we address these concerns. Perceptions It's okay for individuals to prepare food at home and to sell to the public without seeking a food license. Every person handling food requires a food handler license. People can slaughter and offer meat for sale without prior inspection or a food license. A food handler license is required. Think about the consequences if meat is not inspected. I'm sure you know the saying, never judge a book by its cover. The public is not adequately aware of the department's regulatory responsibilities. This may be true, but individuals can seek knowledge and ask questions. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is responsible for fogging. Fogging for mosquitoes should be a shared responsibility between the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the public. St. Lucia's environmental health mission is to protect human health and the environment through the effective delivery of environmental health services. To carry out this mission, the department has several units with officers who are professionally trained and specialised and, dare I say, remain humble in the delivery of their skills. 
Environmental health units have to be on their guard 24-7. The areas of surveillance is tricky because although it affects health, in some cases livelihoods are affected. For example, vendors selling coconut water and cane juice on their own recycling bottles. Food from home kitchens transported to vehicle booths and trucks. I asked the head of the Department of Environmental Health, Parker Ragnarin, why environmental health was important. Environmental health is indeed very important in terms of preventing public health risk. The main objective of environmental health is really to protect uh, the public and citizens against a risk to public health and safety. And this is done primarily through collaboration with uh, key agencies and organizations in terms of working together in meeting some of the objectives of uh, health and well-being and uh, as well as environmental sustainability. This is done uh, through a number of guiding principles uh, that would include uh, collaboration with key partners and agencies. It is done by looking at data in order to ensure that planning is done adequately because in St. Lucia we have a number of environmental risks um, that are present and therefore uh, we need to have adequate planning in place to be able to uh, rectify and deal with some of the environmental problems. Environmental Health Division has a number of key program areas. Among them, we have our vector control program, our food safety program, our water and wastewater program, our pot health surveillance program, and our community uh, mobilization, community health, occupational health and safety, and well-being. Some of these programs are, are very, very, very important programs. For example, the Pot Health Surveillance Program. It's a program that is implemented at our points of entry in St. Lucia, primarily to put systems in place in order to have surveillance for public health emergencies. This would include, among other things, the entry of infectious diseases into the island. And therefore, our port health officers are stationed at key points of entry in order to ensure that our country is protected against uh, introduction of new infectious agents into the country. Uh, the port health surveillance program also is responsible for ensuring that uh, nationals as well as visitors to St. Lucia are protected against the risk of international threats to public health. Uh, throughout the world, we have on a year-to-year -year basis new and emerging diseases. Um, some of them are life-threatening as well, and uh, many a times our citizens uh, express concerns. And in 2014, for example, there were major concerns with regards to the introduction of the Ebola virus into St. Lucia. And, uh, and therefore, a lot of questions were being asked as to what systems the St. Lucia have in place in terms of monitoring at the ports, both in terms of incoming passengers and outgoing passengers. Um, there are no foolproof port health surveillance program. However, you need to have systems in place to be able to uh, have advanced surveillance in terms of where passengers are coming from, uh, where travelers are coming from to your country, as St. Lucia is heavily uh, based, our, our economy is heavily based on tourism, and therefore when we look at new markets, we have to be very, very uh, concerned about what it is that comes into the country, um, depending on the country that uh, our, our visitors are coming from. Um, we have the uh, Occupational Health and Safety and Workers' Health Program, and today there are major concerns in many workplaces with regard to air quality and uh, as well as the issue of ergonomics, the safety of equipment, um, and uh, therefore there are a number of hazards that 
uh, are present in a number of working environments. What we find in St. Lucia is that many a times the, the places that people work, the offices they work, were not necessarily built for office space. It was probably built with other intentions in mind. And what you have is that these buildings are retrofitted for people to inhabit. And they may not necessarily meet all the requirements for worker safety and health. And as a result, what we are finding is that the issue of air quality is a big concern. The issue of mold growth um, in many environments, working environments, are also critical. And our um, institutional hygiene and the occupational safety uh, program uh, deals with some of the issues in terms of how workplaces can become safer for the occupants thereof. The other programs, um, such as food safety and uh, water and wastewater program, vector management program, are ongoing programs that has very, very key deliverables and are, are essentially critical to ensuring the safety of our population in terms of protection against vector-borne diseases as well as protection against food-borne diseases and to ensuring that there is general uh, safety in the environment that we occupy. We have been able to occur some major achievements. Um, before 2005, St. Lucia did not have a port health surveillance program. But now we have a fully activated port health surveillance program. And I think that is very, very important. Because in 2007, St. Lucia signed on to an international document. It's an actually an international legal instrument. And it's called the International Health Regulations of 2005. And it therefore means that uh, as part of that international instrument, countries are mandated to ensure that uh, there is capacity at uh, the points of entry. In 2014, St. Lucia actually designated two ports of entry as international designated points of entry for St. Lucia. So it means that if you have an aircraft coming to St. Lucia and you have sick people on board, you can direct that, that aircraft to one airport where you will have the capacity in place to be able to manage uh, an outbreak of a disease on an aircraft. Similarly for uh, sea vessels, um, the Cache Seaport has been designated as a designated point of entry for international health purposes. So it doesn't matter to what port a vessel may be coming into St. Lucia, you can direct a vessel with sick people on board to the Cache Seaport and there you'd be able to uh, provide the necessary capacity in terms of managing an outbreak on board. And believe you me, many times in this island we find that there are uh, instances of outbreaks on both our um, vessels at sea as well as our uh, aircrafts. As, uh, and, and, and therefore, I think this, this is a, a major program, a major achievement, and we need to continue to build on that program. We've also um, been able on a year-by-year -year basis um, for the last five years or so to publish a list of licensed eating establishment. It therefore means that our St. Lucian public can make informed decision as to where to purchase food to consume. Because a list of licensed food establishment is published in the major newspapers and in the Gazette on a yearly basis. Um, over the last two years, we have started uh, a training and sensitization program with our food handlers. There are many people who go into food handling without the necessary knowledge of their impact on the food business. And what we have done is, as part of obtaining a health certificate, which is a basic requirement by law for any food handler, uh, that is they need to have a food handler certificate. And this is done by um, visiting a medical practitioner, doing certain lab tests, and ensuring that you are free from infectious agents that can be transmitted through foods. We have included now a training component to that. So it means that any existing food handler or any person 
desiring to enter into the food industry uh, can now come in and twice a week at our offices in Wadawange, in Sofre and Viewfort, we provide training in basic food hygiene principles. It is called the five keys to food safety and it gives you some uh, important information as to the do's and don'ts in, in, food, in, in food safety and how uh, you can basically uh, prevent the transmission of, of organisms to food that would cause foodborne diseases. Uh, we've also been able to enhance our collaboration with a number of key partners in terms of our community mobilization and sensitization programs, especially in the area of vector control. Um, St. Lucia have seen in the recent past a number of outbreaks of vector-borne diseases. Um, in 2012, we had a dengue fever outbreak. In 2014, we had a, a chikungunya outbreak. In 2016, we had a Zika virus outbreak. They all are transmitted by the same mosquito, which is the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And as part of our efforts in terms of controlling the spread of mosquito-borne diseases and vector-borne diseases as a whole, we've strengthened our linkages with a number of community partners, Solid Waste Management Authority, um, with the Physical Planning Unit, with Ministry of Agriculture, as well as working with a number of community groups in many of the communities. And uh, um, we have actually strengthened a lot of our linkages with the different constituency councils in many of the, of the constituencies. Um, thereby getting support in terms of our vector control program, in terms of ensuring that uh, uh, basic sanitation is, is practiced. And we want to continue to work with these, these communities in terms of ensuring that there is sustainable um, management uh, for vectors. Question. Port Health Surveillance is responsible for ensuring that nationals and visitors are protected against the risk of international threats to public health. True or false? Answer, true. Advanced surveillance through the Port Health Surveillance Programme made international news in May 2019 when a cruise ship was quarantined at the Castries Harbour due to a reported case of measles. St Lucia health officials supplied 100 doses of vaccine to the ship. It takes one case of measles to cause an outbreak. Have you stopped to think about what could have happened if our health service did not conform to international health standards? Question. If a person handles food that they sell to the public, they must acquire a food handler certificate. True or false? Answer. True. Every person who handles food and sells it to others must have a food handler certificate. The Environmental Health Food Safety Unit can assist, and it's free. Other sector sorti a yona de se departman ki ka joue go pa se departman pou sorti a vivonman. Sa se Environmental Health Department. Misyo departman sa la, se pou proteje sorti moun ek a vivonman, pa se divonwa servis sorti a vivonman. You can offer. Chef officer Sotia Vivonman, Mr. Packer Ragnanan, parle de toi vaila, you can offer a department salary. Moi, cette manne, nous avons apporté un achat de service pour le public de cette Nous avons apporté un service à des affaires de management pour les migrants et les autres, avec l'autre. Um, les animaux qui ont transmis des diseases. Nous avons provoqué des services à l'assurance um, pour, pour, pour un chat qui a mangé des animaux qui ont été malades. Et un programme de la programme ça là, nous avons gardé pour aller inspecter la place où on a tapé et on nous avons inspecté um, manger qui a venu à cette ici, dans l'autre pays, et pour assurer que le manger ça là, qui venait à cette ici, c'est un manger qui n'a pas fait un monde malade. Nous avons um, gardé à ce um, qui a nous a imposé côté monde qui a resté. Et c'est pour ça que tout um, le développement qu'a fait à cette ici, 
au niveau port en plein à département pour nous ça à garder plein ça pour assurer qui date qui la provision pour yo ça um, disposer um, um, disposer de l'eau et um, et assi, faire assez wasment date qui um, la prani top money pas overcrowd um, à ces building là so c'est un autre programme nous regarder nous avons un programme qui a gardé à sous um, mettre bagay en place à sous ces ports um, du fond um, airport et ces ports saint lucie pour nous ça um, observer les gens qui va venir à saint lucie uh, pour nous ça try empêcher maladie entrer en saint lucie um, par bâtiment et ben um, plein nous aussi um, ni un programme côté nous qu'a gardé um, about travailler avec ces places là qu'a travaillé là um, pour assurer que yo pas taper quand yo exposé pour um, défendre bien environnement et cause yo pour malade um, en chaque nous qu'a about mold growth avec mold en ces places là nous qu'a about um, qui manière um, c'est air condition na kata hebe pa kata vay bien la pani finet de la la pani van ka ex, ka 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 ta pe um, exchange so nou ka gade about whole safety a a a plus ta vay a cette lycée so c'est à dans ces programme là nou ka gade pou nou aussi ni ni, ni programme côté nou ka gade de l'eau et qualité de l'eau qui um, nou ka jwenn site nou et um, aussi c'est de l'eau nou ka acheter pour boire nous voulons faire assurance que de l'eau nous avons boire sans de l'eau qui ne fait pas nous malades. Nous avons mis en place à présent pour les gens qui veulent travailler en des affaires, vendre manger et préparer manger, les gens. À présent, nous avons mis un programme pour ça, um, étoiler les gens à la uh, manière pour ça. Um, ça y est, fait pour empêcher de um, passer des et des maladies à manger à qui a pas de so, um, Donc, les gens qui travaillent à manger ne pour pas un health card. Et pour jouer un health card, ça, là, on peut un docteur, on peut faire des tests en la blague pour assurer qu'on ne peut pas avoir maladie ou ça transmettre à manger. Ça nous a fait aussi, c'est nous avons un, un, un programme pour éduquer les gens à ce que ça y est pour faire que pas faire à affaires préparer manger et vendre manger sur l'année un petit trading programme ça nous n'y a un petit programme aussi côté nous qu'on travaille avec un chaise c'est même comme maintenant nous qu'on travaille avec ces councils là nous qu'on travaille avec l'autre département gouvernement pour nous garder des affaires vermin à cette lycée parce que nous qu'on est l'année malade maigouin malade ouat à cette lycée et qui nous pour travailler avec l'autre département avec l'autre monde pour nous assurer d'être qui nous a venu ensemble et travailler ensemble pour nous ça ou abattre problème là nous avec um, ces vermin ça là nous ni um, nous j'ai fait bon petit progrès là aussi nous 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 j'ai fait progrès à ce um, tous les années nous a publié Aida a so se newspaper et ben moun ki a social media de le Facebook ou sa wè um, se différents establishment Saint Lucie ki j'a tapé licence pou vann manger so si an ou vle sa côté ki um, ni an licence pa département santé ou sa jwenn se li sa so sa fò choix ou sa dat ki lò ale a dan plas sa la sa plas ki a apouvre pou vann manger sa la so nou j'a fè bon di pogwe an se an se différents plas sa est travail département pour santé environnement c'est pour assurer et protéger santé cette lycée et aussi environnement nous en dedans et oui bi non we pas la série keep watching as you'll be alarmed to know the amount of food that was taken off the market and condemned as unfit for human consumption by the environmental health division But I'm pretty sure you know that food establishments must display public health licenses within a conspicuous area in their establishment. You might have known, but do you pay attention? Think of the repercussions. Here's my starting question to Unit Head Ernie Pierre. 
the main objective of the food safety unit is to reduce the risk of foodborne illness and to ensure that the population is not exposed to unwholesome foods. Um, the mandate of this program, more or less, is enshrined in the Public Health Act. The Public Health Act makes provision for various pieces of regulation. There are three pieces of regulation that governs the work of the food safety program. The services provided within the program are in line with the regulations as mentioned. Um, the registration of food handlers is one of the services that we provide in terms of renew, renew, renewing of health cards and persons that are applying for health certificates. We are all, the program also ensures that there is a level of training and awareness um, that is done in terms of uh, food handlers in basic food safety training. Um, that program has been implemented to ensure that um, persons that are coming in that they uh, have they have knowledge in the area of food safety when they are getting the health certificates. Um, persons who are coming for renewal of public health licenses as well need to apply. Um, they will get the inspections done once they apply within this this um, program area. Um, for new establishments when they are applying, that's another service that is provided when new establishments apply, um, the applications are reviewed and under this program once they meet the requirements they are able to be licensed. Um, so basically the uh, appraisal of plans as well for food establishments, all of that is done within this program, keeping with the mandate that is established under the Public Health Act. Um, butchers as well, if they require inspection, for animals that are being slaughtered, that is done under this program as well. In the food safety program, uh, recently, as I mentioned, one of the areas that we have improved on is to ensure that persons that are acquiring health certificates, um, that they are just not getting a health certificate, that as part of obtaining a health certificate, they get a measure of training. Um, we have also been a lot more active in terms of the in the program in terms of recalls um, there are very frequent recalls um, the ministry of health and st lucia by extension is part of uh, the infosan which is actually the international authorities international food safety authorities network and um, we get early alerts as to foods that are on the market in any country and uh, we're able to work with with the importers and the large supermarket um, to determine whether this food is on the market in St. Lucia and if it is we are able to remove these products as well in a timely manner. So these are some of the improvements that we have made um, in the program over the years. We are also able to thoroughly go through plans that are being submitted um, upon construction when those once those establishments have been constructed we are able to walk through them to ensure compliance. Um, that is something that we ensure before they operate. Um, so we, are all, we have also been, and um, in this program, uh, in the Department of Health and Wellness, every year they have been able, biannually, they have been able to print um, a list of um, um, gazetted uh, or food establishment uh, published in the various papers um, to guide the public as to the places that are licensed when they are meeting out. Question. The Food Safety Unit is responsible for approving plans for mass events and officers attend events while in progress. True or false? Answer. It's true. Aba département pour santé environnement, l'année y a un programme food safety, ça veut dire manger sain et sauve. Objectif program sa la, se pou asiwe manje boun ka podwi e ka van sen e sov. Sa ou si si pose asiste a de demash la, pou koupe asou wis pou moun jwen malan. Ofisye santi e vivan mo pou manje sen e sov bisi en e pie, pale de yi twavay la, yo ka fe e ba program sa la. Food safety program la ni an wessensabilite pou asiwe dat manje qui a produit cet lycée, manger qui est à la place là, pas qu'il fait mon malade, là où manger, 
comme il y a une responsabilité aussi pour ça assurer dat um, moun pa ka tape ko yo exposé pa manger maladie ki ka sorti pa manger um, en bas ça non en bas en bas loi um, pa ça non ka di public health act l'année 3 3 3 loi en bas en bas act ça là ki ça en ka di en anglais uh, food safety uh, regulations um, Bakeries regulation, ça qui a gouverné côté au café pain, et puis ça qui a gouverné um, gouverné um, boucher qui a tué vian. Um, tout ça qui a venu en bas programme ça là. Ce so, programme là c'est un programme qui est bien important uh, pour assurer d'être uh, manière magique à taper quoi il produit, manière magique à taper quoi il vend, mon uh, cavan magie en place là d'artika topic ou fait un uh, bawek là ba programme ça là uh, inspecteur qui ka travaille uh, uh, en ba programme là yo ka aller et puis yo ka uh, visiter um, différents côtés qui ka produit magie différents restaurants bay comme restaurant n'importe place là qui ka faire magie si si yo ka store magie si yo ka vendre magie si yo ka um, Fait magie en place de quoi si vous êtes au café en bas condition um, ça n'a pas de qui net qui sanitaire en bas là. Est en bas programme food safety l'année inspecteur qui a visité ces places magie quoi si vous magie au capot de l'aide vingt cinq et cent par mon public là et oui b non oui pour cela c'est oui. Did you know that the water and sewage company Wasco is the only agency that supplies pipe-borne portable water and they are the main agency offering municipal sewage services? Of course you do! But you may have taken for granted that the company's water supplies are tested by the Ministry of Health and Wellness's Environmental Health Unit. Carol Centromain is the Acting Assistant Chief Health Environmental Officer and she explains here the responsibility of the Water and Waste Water Unit. The unit is called um, the Water and Waste Water Unit within the Environmental Health Division. Um, we are responsible for a number of things, um, namely plant development. Um, what we do in that we um, assess every category of development on island. We monitor water, potable water, potability of water, and um, we do it by uh, what we call residual chlorine, where a reagent is added to a sample of the water and then to test it, it's, it's uh, the level of chlorine in there. Um, we monitor um, and regulate, license rather, all bottling plants, water bottling plants, and I think on island we have five of them, so all these bottling plants are um, regulated, monitored, inspected and regulated. We also monitor the appliances that um, convey water. So this would be um, what we call the water trucks on island, um, all these appliances. But what we do with these trucks, um, upon inspection, um, in addition to doing the residual chlorine, we do what is called the bacterial, bacteriological analysis and there are a number of parameters where we, they, they need to conform to. So um, before the initial inspection, um, the applicant needs to submit um, a sample, well the results of, of the sample of the water within that environment. want the public to know that um, both bottled water and the water through the distribution line is safe to consume because um, we do a level of testing on that the, the water going through the distribution line. So persons should not just use the water for domestic purposes, but um, they can, um, if it's to their own liking, filter it, further filter it, but the water is safe to drink because we um, as our mandate is to um, regulate and, and test the water. Question. Waste and wastewater unit officers constantly adapt to ensure they operate within safe industry environmental standards. True or false? Answer. Yes, it's true. 
water and wastewater unit officers constantly adapt to ensure they operate within safe industry environmental standards. Yonada se unit la oba departement pou sote environment se water ek waste water. Kini was responsabilité pou fè investigation a sou tout plan développement set le si. Assistant chef officier sote environnement, Madame Cheryl St. Romain, explique wol département le vini pou plan développement et pi pou gwe yon ja fe. Wol nou se pou um as inspect, assess tout kategori plan, development plan moun ka yon fe construct fe ka yon development plan um, so nou ka gade ka yon wa yon stadan, nou ka fe sa residential ka yon pou difon kal de business nou ka fe sa commercial um, ka yon pou mette baray kon leglis e pi um, lekol um, apatman so ka yon fe apatman se pose um, um, submit a plan. Um, recreation, kote moun just ka ali pou fan bon tan. Um, plan sa. So, tout different development. Plan simply si, plan sa si pose receive an uh, department nou pou nou assess li, et pi um, by recommendation. L'ane avan, uh, chay l'ane avan, nou te ka, um, department te, nou, moun te ka we, ou public la te ka we department, just public health, moun ki ka jes ali from Yonkai Koulot. Men a chalman, um, mam department, za mette koyo adan an level pou professionalism, mm -hmm. le yo, yo specialize an difo bagay. So, kon environment ka chanje, nou ni kapasite ya pou nou responde pou ti difo an chanjman sa la ki ka ni vini an environment. So, pou mwen, um, mwen sa kon an bon achievement, a major achievement pou department. So, nepot bagay ki vini, um, nou ni climate change, nou ni difon bagay ki ka vini, department um, environmental health, nou ha mette kon nou adan pozisyon pou nou sa responde pou se um, Es tout plan development, residential and recreation, ni pou vini a unit water ek waste water a department pou vi wan ma sati pou jwen okupasyon. E, wi, bi, non. We pos la se wi. The Department of Environmental Health is responsible for providing all the vector control services nationally and collaborates with the Bureau of Health Education in the dissemination of vector control information to vulnerable communities. The lead on vector management, Charlotte Charles, explains. What we do is we try to reduce the vector population on island. So currently the vector the vectors of public health significance that we have on the island are mosquitoes and rats. Mosquitoes have the potential to spread dengue fever, chicken gunya, Zika, and we've done quite a bit of publicity on it. We also focus on controlling the rodent population on the island as well, and as everybody knows, well, most persons should know that rats have the potential to spread leptospirosis. So what we do is we undertake a number of activities geared towards the reduction of these vector populations. So. Um, Take for instance the mosquito population, we would have officers, vector control officers, going around in different communities carrying out house to house um, inspections for active and potential mosquito breeding sites. So they would go into a yard, introduce themselves, do these inspections, try to identify these breeding grounds and also to do some treatment as well. Um, they would also provide the householder with some education in terms of what it is that they should look for, if they are seeing mosquitoes, where should they inspect, and give them just some basic information as to how to carry an inspection. We would also participate in some fogging operations as well. And fogging operations, it is aimed at destroying the mosquito at the adult stage. Many, in many instances, we get persons calling our department and ask for fogging because they see mosquitoes around. But one of the things that we try to educate persons about is that the fogging operations, it's not going to, it's not a solve all. It's not going to just get rid of the problem for you immediately, unless you get rid of the source. So hence the reason we try to do 
as much education and as much um, source reduction as possible so that we can reduce that population. We would also participate in a lot of cleanup activities. We have gone into communities, we have done assessments, we've realized that, hey, there are issues with rats, issues with mosquitoes, bulky waste, um, disposal, and we've organized quite a bit of cleanup campaigns over the years to reduce the source of these mosquitoes as well as rats as well. And of course, we would do some baiting, especially in the city of Cashes. And I know it is a huge concern for most of our St. Our Lucian public, the issue of rats, because we go to our city and we see rats running around. So we do quite a bit of baiting. Um, but of course, there are quite a bit of environmental, health, environmental concerns which need to be addressed with the baiting. So in certain communities, we have seen quite a bit of improvement. Let's say if we have a cleanup campaign, we would see improvement. Um, but our biggest issue is making it sustainable. Because having a cleanup campaign in a community is not a, a cure-all unless you can get buy-in buy from the community. Persons could understand why is that we're having a cleanup campaign and what brought us to that point. So it's not a cure we need to have some level of sustainability that after a clear campaign is done, for instance, that persons understand, hey, we can continue our bad habits because it's gonna take us right back to the same place. So we have communities where we've definitely seen some level of improvement um, and some others are a little more difficult to work with, and, um, but we'll continue working with them. the most crippling perceptions that the public has is that everything has to be done by the department. So, for instance, they would know that there are mosquitoes around. Instead of taking the initiative and going out to do an inspection, they're just look in the yard, look for water holding containers, look, make sure that the septic tank isn't um, damaged, that the drums are properly covered, the containers are properly covered. They have a tendency to call our department and say, hey, can you come and check? So there's this dependency um, that the department has to do everything for them. If there's a drain that is blocked, it's maybe just adjacent to their house. And instead of maybe the community members coming together and saying, hey, you know, this is a problem. Let's try to do, see if we could clean it up or something. And maybe take that day where you do a little could me or something like that. And you just come and you clean the drain and you take, risk, you take responsibility for your community. It doesn't happen. And this, I think, is the the biggest misconception. This this is the biggest um, issue that we have. Just this dependency and not persons not wanting to take responsibility for their communities and for their households. In terms of what we really like to leave with the public is the fact that we need to take that responsibility of um for our communities for ourselves. We need before you call the department, do a little research if you see mosquitoes around. Um, Look for your water holding containers, look for your, your sources of breeding before you jump the gun, essentially, and um, make that complaint or request that we come in to do the inspection. Of course, we're always willing, we're always happy to give persons um, knowledge to spread, you know, what we know. Um, but of course, we need to be able to have some level of personal responsibility for our in our Question. Rats spread leptospirosis. The disease can be caught by humans through contact with rat or cattle urine. True or false? Answer. True. Wheels disease is a form of bacterial infection also known as leptospirosis that is carried by animals most commonly in rats and cattle. It can be caught by humans through contact with rat or cattle urine, most commonly occurring through contaminated fresh water. Département pour santé environnement aussi ne wè responsabilité pou pòtwè un service kote yo ka kòtwè lè ek detwi bèt kòm aigwen ek wat ki sa anè kòz maladi an pami moun an se difè wè kòm en peyi a. Officier santé environnement pour vector control, Mamsel Charlotte Charles, dit qu'il est important et puis nécessaire pour yo faire travail ces différents communes là pour empêcher maladie, dengue fever, chicken gunya, et zika, hot migraine et puis maladie leptospirosis hot si wat là. 
so tous les jours nous ni on um, travaille nous qui aller dans de, de, différents communes yo ka aller tweeter um, bagay ki ka chen glo et ko c'est ma grand ça ka konn so yo ka vinn bo ka yo yo ka vinn di dan um, drum yo ka vinn di dan bon momeni tout bay ki ka um, ch- ou ka charger glo di dan yo ka vinn et yo um, si ka si ma grand ka konn di dan yo ka yo Twenty gloire pour le détruire ces maigres. En détail, par contre, nous avons fait un chai et nous avons fait nous avons un chai pour bien dire différents différents communes. Dans les communes, nous avons dit dans éclaté un chai wat chai maigre monte kavin malade toujours la caille docteur par contre mais nous tenir chance pour nous aller en dire dans ces communes ça nous tenir ça fait um, éducation et puis ces mots-là, nous t'es ça fait um, bah qu'on campé campé pour nous nettoyer et nous ha un chai sexy à dire de ça. Mais là l'autre commune qui uh, t'y met plus difficile, mais nous ca continuer ta et puis c'est comme ça. A comme commune pire qui you need vector control. Café toi avais pour contrôler et détruire bête comme un gros écouat qui ça en est cause maladie au parmi moun. E, sec, B, tout comme une cette lesi, C, yon, D, D. Oui, pour cela c'est tout comme une cette lesi. There are other programs in this series highlighting the services and achievements in St. Lucia's healthcare that tell you more about the strategists and administrators who come together to provide international standard services. The contact details for the services mentioned in this program follows. See you next time when we explore our health service. Goodbye.